welcome everyone uh, the goal today is to uh, go go more a bit more in depth from what i covered uh, in the lightning round uh, hopefully with some fun slides cuz there nick allowed me to put just one slide uh, we'll have a quick demo uh before we go to demo we, we're going to talk a little bit more about you know why do you need capstan what can capstan do for you uh we have a small demo to just give you an idea of what you can do uh with capstan uh we have a small exercise at the end so that's why you know we have tables and we're going to name number the tables uh you would be finding bug in a genii app so if you made a decision to come to this one uh you can either win a prize or at least update your linkedin that you have worked on a gen ai app in the other session all you can say is you attended a session <laughs> right so let's talk about what are we all building uh, all, all the uh, superset hive companies are basically trying to build a secure and reliable service to your customer right that's the end goal and uh, there is one scenario when you don't need capstan to achieve that in all of the scenarios uh you would need a solid platform so let's talk about those two words what is a reliable and secure service right uh because that's all your customers care about does reliability mean high availability yes of course but i would argue it also means highly performant you know how quickly does your queries respond how snappy your ui is it's not only how available your service is so that's that's all part of having an extremely reliable service a service that customer can use achieve what they want to very quickly and of course we all know what secure means right they they are sharing their private data with you their own customers information um, uh, and they want to ensure on internet trust is one of the most important thing when you deliver as a service that when they use your service that data is going to be secure with you and when we design an application that is reliable and secure and and based on how much reliable you want you want four nines five nines you know triple nine five it influences your architecture decisions are you going to deploy multi region uh, is your database going to be multi zone uh, you know what is your disaster recovery plan how quickly your service can come up uh, you are you going to deploy your ui application near to the customer uh, because you want the ui to be extremely snappy and all those decisions eventually influence how you deploy your application and that eventually influences what experience does your customer get uh, when they use your application so let's talk about the journey and i spoke a bit about this on lightning round uh, but we'll talk a little bit more in detail here uh, so the first decision your team makes is infrastructure provisioning right uh, this is a snapshot of what you can get on aws right and so while you are building your business application someone on the team need to know at least a bunch of these things so that they can make the right decision on deploying the infrastructure that would eventually run the applications you are writing uh and if you are multi cloud learn those things about azure and gcp right uh and at some point of time you would have to figure out if this is where you going to spend your time or you going to spend your time building your business application the next point is figure out how you are going to deploy your application right i spoke a bit about this as well are you going to run uh, kubernetes natively are you going to use eks how are you going to set up your networking and what about roles and policies uh, that attach to this things and this is just your own application uh, your team is going to use a bunch of open source applications you know postgres kafka who is going to become at least a semi expert at those because those needs deployment those needs backup strategy those needs tuning to provide a reliable service to your customer so somebody has to read up all those become a semi expert if not an expert uh, and deploy those maintain those upgrade those so you have to figure this one out and remember while you are doing all of this customer doesn't care about any of this right customer doesn't care what programming language you are using how you are deploying uh you know are you using vim as an editor or any other inferior id they don't care uh all they care is they get a reliable and secure service so you figure these two things out and you know the next step you have to secure them uh how you going to store your credentials who is accessing what when they access what they change somebody went to production 
made a change in your Europe deployment, and now my US, Europe, and Asia deployments are not consistent. Uh, you've got to figure that out. Uh, how are you going to store the, secure, the information that customer provided to you, the personal information that customer provided to you, right? So you have to set up the whole OpenVPN, Bastion, all those configuration, audit, uh, authentication, et cetera, et cetera. And the last thing we spoke about uh, yesterday as well is, once you deploy this app, it's nicely configured, it's available for customer to use, and customer starts reporting problems. Uh, so you need to now figure out how are you going to pull those metrics and logs that your application is generating, store it in a centralized place, install agents on all those pods and uh, workloads, machines, keep them upgraded, uh, and build dashboards. So your PMs, your engineers can see how are things happening, you know, who is using what, uh, a rate of uh, user creations, or if people are you know, creating projects on your website. Uh, and the next thing on the metrics, you're gonna look at CPUs, memory, queue sizes, and then you have to set alerts, because it is a bad strategy that your customer tells you your service is unavailable, right? You want to figure out on your own before a customer reports a problem. So you're gonna set alerts, you're gonna set on-call schedules, you want to get notified when things start going bad before the customer tells you, and then when your pager goes off, the first thing you're gonna go is start debugging. You know, you're gonna start looking at the logs, you're gonna start to figure out where the problem lies and mitigate them. Again, a list of things on your journey uh, that you have to do that has nothing to do with your business application uh, that customer doesn't care about directly. They care about indirectly by having a reliable and secure service that you have to do. And it's not just about Capstan. It's important to realize this. I think a lot of people don't realize how big a challenge this can become. And they just go with the flow uh, and a default solution which is to have banded in-house uh, DevOps platform, right? You know, you hire one person, uh, you don't have budget, good DevOps engineers are difficult to come by, they are always underfunded. Every time, you know, we used to have this uh, joke that every quarter you get new recs, and the front-end folks come and take some recs, the back-end folks come take some recs, and the DevOps don't have any recs left. Uh, and so they, then try to make the best solution out of the resources they have. But they can only do so much because business always takes priority. Funding teams that build business application always takes priority. And before you know, this DevOps team start becoming your bottleneck because they can't develop as fast as your engineering team is trying to use new technologies. Uh, there's also an interesting journey of DevOps, right? I mean, there used to be a time when Dev and Ops used to be separate to you know, there used to be a time when QE and Dev used to be separate. So, uh, you know, you write your code, you throw over the wall, somebody tests it, they throw over the wall, somebody deploys it. And then you know what happens to QE. We said, hey, if you write the code, you write the tests. And the DevOps was supposed to solve that for the Dev plus Ops. But over time, what ended up happening is the expectation started becoming that Ops also do Dev because they have to do tooling, programming, instead of dev doing ops. And we still have this journey where developers focus on business application, and then they don't have time left to learn about deployment part, securing part, and they expect another team to take care of that, which is terrible because those things influences your architectural decisions, right? A simple thing like going for compliance is going to generate a ton of engineering work if you have not taken care of that at start, you know, you were using static keys to access your S3 buckets, now you have them to rotate that every week to get a compliance certificate, that's two weeks of engineering project. And there's stuff like that. And so what has ended up happening is the DevOps part is still kind of not rightly fixed. Developers still focus on writing their application, throw the code over, uh, and then a small team of heroes are supposed to take care of it, all these problems, with little influence on architecture. Uh, Capstan is trying to solve this problem. Uh, we are trying to build a platform that does all of these things, that puts the owners on engineering teams, that they use the platform, they deploy their own software, they make the decision on architecture, and some of this complexity of deployment, backup, upgrades, Capstan takes care of in backend. Uh, 
a quick little detour to uh, some of my friends who, you know, who are like, okay, infrastructure as code, uh, you know, I can figure it out, right? Uh, my own experience when, uh, when I was an application developer, take an example of S3. The name itself has simple in it. It's supposed to be the simple most AWS service. Uh, and you know, I'm like, I'm just gonna use Terraform. Uh, the Terraform package for S3 has 49 inputs, 26 resources. Uh, and if you are becoming the focal point of the teams that want to create S3 bucket, you have to have decent understanding of at least 30% of that. Uh, and you need to know what is the right configuration to set to have an S3 bucket. On Capstan, you get a simple screen. You name your S3 bucket. You decide whether you want it public or not. And Capstan takes care of all the complexity in backend. We use Terraform. We set up the right IAM roles, right policies, set up the right credential, give you back those to use it in your application so that you, know, you want read only access, you want read write access. It's all done in background for you. And we don't want customer to be locked into the platform. So our plan is to provide this Terraform to customer if they want to move away. Right? So it's open source. What we are providing is reducing the complexity from your engineering team uh, while you are focusing on building your business application. Um, here are all the other infrastructure you can provision. You know, I took an example of file storage S3. Uh, you can provision compute, database, serverless, and we're gonna add support for more of these resources across multi-cloud. In future, uh, we are also planning to add things like vulnerability reporting, you know, plug into your uh, repo and figure out if you are using libraries, patches that has security vulnerability and recommend you uh, mitigation for those. If you are deploying your applications and infrastructure with Capstan, we have a good visibility into what you are using, how much you are using, right? And obviously we are gonna start telling you this is your cost, this is your monthly cost, but we can also tell you before you go on deploying that, hey, this thing, if you were to deploy, is gonna cost you this much every month. And maybe that might change your decision, right? Because that's another area, as you start becoming big, you start figuring out what is the cost of this feature. Um, and then we can tell you, release over release, how your cost is increasing. That's another thing people look for, telling, hey, you know, how much is my cost trending? Or a particular feature or release, what increase it has brought. Uh, we are also planning to do multi-cloud. So not just supporting AWS Azure GCP, but also supporting cross-cloud deployment. You can have some resources in AWS and some other in Azure. Uh, and of course, because we are observing, we can make recommendations. If you're using, uh, say I'm too large, you're probably not utilizing all the memory or used, using less than 30% of CPU, we can give recommendations to move to an instance which would save you money.